All right, HBO Boxing is officially dead. Officially dead. By the way, the final fight will be, I think, October, the end of October. You have Daniel Jacobs and uh, Darvin Checo will be the final fight at the end of October. Okay, just a, look, a quick rundown of why HBO has tanked, okay? Where do I mean, where do we start? Look, I can make an hour long video, but we're, we're, I'll just run through a few. OK, terrible match make matchmaking. OK, and, and plus, I'll give you the official reasons along with my own opinion. And you probably share my opinion as well. Uh, you know, if you know your boxing bias commentating. I mean, come on, Larry Merchant, Jim Lampley, Kellerman, Roy Jones. You know, I think the only only I guess only commentator I've liked over the years would like, truly enjoyed listening to would probably uh, probably be uh, George Foreman. I really liked him. But look, Kovalev gone, Andre Ward gone, Pacquiao gone, Canelo gone, Gennady Golovkin gone, Bob Arum took Terrence Crawford, uh, you know, his, his whole, and Lomachenko, his, just everybody from top rank gone, okay, you know, um, like I said, he took uh, Terrence Crawford along with ESPN, and now I think the only hope they have or had was if Canelo would sign a new contract with HBO, and we all know that isn't going to happen. And even if he did, even if Canelo signed a contract with HBO, look, Canelo cannot carry HBO on his shoulders, okay, alone as the premier fighter with a bunch of you know other guys that uh, you know upcomers whatever or are only known to the true boxing heads i mean he would be the only household name okay okay then like i said you got earl earl spence mikey garcia deontay wilder you know all working with showtime showtime just leading the boxing game right now you know they simply have no one left but why is that? Okay, why do you think all of these all of these top boxing stars will not sign with HBO? Okay, they have literally, meaning they, HBO has literally committed professional suicide. Okay, this is karma, people. Karma, karma at its finest. Okay, this proves. Okay, this proves. So the, the the old saying goes, you know, you can only burn so many bridges, right? You can only burn so many bridges before you know, before nobody have just anything to do with you, right? And, and that's what's truly happened here. You know, you got the 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 Zan now. You know, that will probably take on the top stars like Canelo and whoever else. You know, you got premier boxing champions over two hundred fighters signed up in their stable and of course you know you got like fox uh you know fox and just multiple other boxing you know platforms outlets whatever you know especially the mexican stations got a ton of great boxing now superfly three the lowest rating in the network's history now what does that tell you i mean look hbo 45 years in the game 45 years in the game the original fight was uh who was it george foreman and uh who the hell was it Frazier? I can't remember. Foreman, the original fight. Yeah, I, know, I remember it was George Foreman. But, you know, look, how many times, if you, if you look, if, if, first of all, if you, you know, your first time here, you know, thank you for being here. But if, you're, if you've been around for a while, how many times have you heard me rant and rave asking the question, why would HBO shit? Why would HBO literally shit? on their own fighters okay they just dog they, they would just dog on these guys for like 12 rounds okay and, and the same they, they did the same thing with gennady golovkin you know and these are exclusive hbo fighters right hbo told you what you wanted to see not what you were actually witnessing i gotta repeat that that's powerful hbo told you they're commentating they told you what you wanted to see right not what you're actually seeing I mean, that, 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 that right, right there, just drop the mic, walk away, okay? And you know, you look, and here's the thing, you know in your mind, right? You're watching one guy, you're watching him win, but then these three guys are telling you the other guy is winning. <laughs> or they'll tell you, you know, what a, what a, a terrible performance, uh, you know, from whatever boxer they had in front of him. You know, they would literally try to destroy their own program, right? It's like they're trying to destroy their own product. And, some, you know, sometimes it, it would be a pay-per-view. They're telling you what a terrible fight this is, what an awful, it's boring. You know, it's a snooze fest, right? That's the HBO little staple there. It is a snooze fest. And then 10 seconds later, they're advertising for their next pay-per-view. 
pay-per-view. You know, it just seems like from the beginning, they, they, they were just out to sabotage their own career, right? You know, some now some people said, now I don't want to talk much about this, that HBO would get behind the, the European fighters over the American fighters, you know, or they'd make the, the, you know, which they did. I mean, I'll make a video about that because I want to talk about it, but something they did in fact do that they definitely did, uh, you know, they would make the claim... Who was the pound for pound king, right? For example, Roman Gonzalez, love him to death, great fighter. But they told you, you know, you're watching the best boxer on the planet. But in, and at that time, at that particular time, we didn't know that. Even Lomachenko, you know, they would tell you with 100% confidence, you know, he's the best pound for pound uh, fighter on the planet, right? The best you will ever see. You know, they tried telling us Andre Ward. Okay, come on, Andre freaking Ward was the best pound for pound fighter on the planet. It doesn't get any better than that. He is just the creme de la creme. That is the peak of excellence. There's nowhere to go past Andre Ward. They would literally tell you this, okay? You know, again, you're you're seeing another thing, but they're telling you, you know, something completely different, okay? So it's like they they make up their own delusions. They make up their own their own grandeur, their own, you know, just crazy minds, right? You know, it's funny. Like I said, I've been shouting, shouting from the mountaintop for probably about three years. No one would listen to me. You know, some people would agree, but most people would just shrug me off like I'm ranting and raving. And here we are. You know, I, I kept saying, you know, HBO is going to tank. You know, they're shooting themselves in the foot. You know, it's just a matter of time. And it finally happened. OK, you know, and remember, let's let's go back in history a little bit. HBO has been doing this for a long time, a long time. They did it to uh, Bernard Hopkins, to Chavez Sr. and Jr. for that matter. But Chavez Sr. They even did it to Roy Jones and Roy Jones became one of them. I mean, how's that for freaking irony, right? Roy Jones became one of them. You know, look at the way Larry Merchant would treat fighters. The most, uh, you know, I iconic example of Larry Merchant, you know, shitting on fighters. Look at the Floyd Mayweather, you know, t the post-fight interview. Even if you don't like Mayweather, look at the way he would treat Mayweather, right? Even if you don't like him, love him or hate him, you know, focus on what they were doing. They've been doing this a long time. You know, this is nothing new, right? You know, uh, and here's the thing. We don't tune in to hear Jim Lampley. We don't buy pay-per-views to listen to Max Kellerman. But in their mind, in their mind, they are the mega stars. And what they say is boxing gold, okay? You know, so, and, you know, I'll share some of you guys. The only time I had a video flagged, I've made over 500 videos. The only time anyone ever flagged me was HBO. I made a video talking about the commentating and how they were literally bullying this fighter, right? They were just bullying this guy, talking just mad shit about this guy. And, and I got pissed off and I made a video and uh, they, they flagged me. Well, I challenged it and I won. Okay, I was allowed to repost my video. I chose not to but I could have. So, you know, that what does that show you? That HBO it literally hunts YouTube channels to flag videos. You know, it wasn't flagged by a member or YouTube. It was flagged by HBO Network, okay? Not for copyright infringement, not for using their pictures, not, it was for what I said. They didn't like what I had to say, okay? One time out of 500, I've talked about Canelo, I've talked about Golden Boy, I've talked about, I've talked about Top, you name it, look, every, everyone can get it, I've talked about everyone, and the only network, the only people that, that flagged me was HBO, little, little YouTube counterpunch boxing, okay, crazy, now, Showtime, thriving, ESPN, thriving, you know, I think this design, whatever, is gonna thrive, you know, so, I mean, just, you know, look, to, 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 here, look, here's how to sum it up. The new phrase of 2017, 2018, and 20, or it would have been 2019, the new phrase is, if you really want to watch the fight for what it is, just hit the mute button, right? I mean, how many times, just, just turn the sound off. How many times have people told you that? You know, how many times have you heard people tell you to watch the fight without the commentating, and you'll see a different fight? What does that tell you? I mean, what does that tell you, right? You know, so for me, look, this is a beautiful day. Sweet justice, karma at its best. This is like Christmas. I mean, I, look, and, and, and yeah, it does suck that a huge historic platform like HBO has gone under, but it's time for a change. You know, it's time for a change. The truth will always prevail. Now, maybe it took 43 or whatever years, 45 years, but the truth will always prevail, okay? And it did, and that's what happened. Now, let me show you a few things right here, just real quick. Uh, appearances on HBO. Roy Jones, 32. De La Hoya, 32. Shane Mosley, 27. Mayweather, 27. Pacquiao, 24. 
Koto, 24. Uh, Lennox Lewis, 23. Hopkins, 23. Klitschko. I mean, Tori, I mean, you can just read this. You know, Ber Barrera, Tyson, 17. I mean, just iconic, iconic, historic fights. Okay, so for people that, you know, that, that are new to boxing, it's not, it's not all about Gennady Golovkin or Canelo. I mean, you got to go back to Tyson. You know, you got to go back to Pernell Whitaker. Okay, one of my favorite fighters of all time, Pernell Whitaker. You know, you got to go to B Hop. You know, Lennox Lewis, Cotto, Pacquiao, Mayweather, Moses. I mean, these are, these are just iconic names, you know, uh, built and, and really built. A lot of it was by the platform of HBO, you know. So um, now real quick, Alvarez, just the latest boxing star closely associated with HBO. Uh, others who made their name or who would make a fight, blah, blah, blah. This, this is just mentioning a few more names like we just talked about. Evander Holyfield, De La Hoya, Mayweather, Lennox Lewis, Klitschko. Eric Morales was one that they didn't mention. Uh, Marquez, I mean, come on, how can we forget Juan Manuel Marquez? Uh, there's Pernell Whitaker again. You know, Cesar Chavez Jr., Sugar, Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler, Thomas Hearns, Roberto Duran, Larry Holmes. I mean, the four kings right there, right? Uh, <clears throat> Jones and De La Hoya appeared more than any other fighters with 32 bouts apiece. So, you know, a little interesting history for you there. Roy Jones and uh, Oscar De La Hoya, 32 uh, bouts apiece. You know, so right here confirming that 32-32. So pretty cool, you know. Uh, but, yeah, like I said, man, these guys, it, it's bittersweet for me. It really is because, you know, I hate seeing any platform go down like that. But, you know, they're talking that, that they are a storytelling network, you know, they're, they're Game of Thrones, and they like, you know, series like that, right, you know, whatever, Dexter, or whatever, I don't know, I don't know, I don't watch all that crowd, now, I love Game of Thrones, that's my, that's my shit right there, but, you know, uh, but, you know, they, they, they're talking about how they just, you know, they want to get away from boxing, but, well, why now, uh, why are, why, why is it now you're only a storytelling, you know, uh, network, right, meaning they're not a sport, they're not an ESPN, they, they're not a sports network, why now, why now? You know, it's like after they hang themselves, oh, well, we're, we're you know, we're really not, really not about boxing, you know, so I find that very, very, very ironic, you know, so let me go through here real quick. The boxing, next run boxing will impact the blah, 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 blah. Now, right here, Jim Lampley won't be calling boxing matches any longer. He said he will stay at the network. So you're still going to have Jim Lampley, but for, as far as, you know, Roy Jones, Kellerman, the whole crew, you know, Harold Letterman, they're gone. You know, peace out. You know, they're gone. So um, let's see. HBO's gold standard for boxing. You know, a little more history. And I'll probably shut it off here. HBO was a gold standard for boxing on television throughout most of its run, often drawing millions of views for its bouts. It has so far aired, wow, 1,111 fights beginning with George Foreman's second round. Over, I, I got it right earlier. I said it was Frazier. Yeah, George Foreman and Joe Frazier, you know, to win the heavyweight world championship. In Jamaica, 1973. I mean, that's crazy. 45 years, man. 40 years. Just, you know, like I said, yeah, it's a sad day. But at the same time, you know, like I said, you can only burn so many bridges before no one, no one, no one will fuck with you. So that, that's what happened. That's what happened. I mean, really, you know, you want to put it on like street terms or whatever. That's what happened. You know, so, and it, I find that ironic, too, you got uh, Oscar De La Hoya talking about, well, HBO merged with, was it AT&T, some $85 billion merge, and, you know, so they're going to be fine, you know, their boxing going to be fine, and he, what he was saying, he was saying, look, AT, it was either T-Mobile or AT&T just merged with HBO and dumped a ton of money into their bank, it was like $80 million or I don't know, just a ton of money. Meaning that they can ramp up their boxing schedule for 2019 because remember they made budget cuts like a year ago. They they even announced in like 2017 that 2018 they're gonna have boxing you know budget cuts for the year of 2018. Well, you know, I guess Oscar was kind of thinking, well, you know, you guys just got a boatload of money. Now you can ramp up your boxing, you know, your, uh, you know, your boxing uh, schedule again, your programming for 2019 and give Canelo, you know, a little piece of that money. You know, that's what he was thinking. And then boom, you know, shock. This is like the shock of the decade right here that they're, they're going under. They're calling it quits, you know. Now, is it quitting or tanking? It's tanking. So here's, you know, don't, don't get it twisted. They're not quitting. They tanked, okay? They tanked. There's a difference. I mean, it, look, look at look, uh, what Showtime's doing, you know? So if they can do it, why can't HBO, right? You know, 
I mean, why are all the good fighters going to other networks? So, and here's a little statement they put out. I don't want to read it all. You know, our mission at HBO Sports is to elevate the brand. We look for television pro- pro- projects that are high profile, high access, and, and ambitious um, right here in the stories. Oh, shit, where'd it go? And that's just where they're talking about, you know, the storytelling. I think it's funny that Max Kellerman brought up storytelling in the Canelo Golovkin fight, right? You know, right here. Ambitious in the stories they seek to tell in the quality of production and telling them. HBO Sports said uh, in a statement, Boxing has been a part of our heritage for decades. During that time, the sport has undergone a transformation. It is now widely available on a host of networks and streaming services. There, uh, There is more boxing than ever being televised and distributed. Uh, in some cases, the program is very good. But from an entertainment point of view, it's not unique. Ouch, ouch. I mean, wow. It's not you. It's like things have changed, but, you know, not not that dramatic. Right. I mean, they're basically like 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 they've been running the show for 45 years. And now all of a sudden they're acting like it's, you know, they have like one season came out and it tanked or something, you know, like, oh, we tried this little boxing thing and, you know, it didn't really work out for us, you know, so we're going to get away from that. It's like, no, no, there's a bigger explanation and I I just gave it to you. Okay, so, all right, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. Leave your comment below. What do you think?